Hey guys, this is gonna be a shorter video than usual. Just something interesting that I found recently since I've been spending a lot of time fine tuning GPT-3. I was looking up videos on how to get the most out of a fine tuned model and had a lot of success actually with my fine tuned model. Um, the outputs were significantly um, more in line with what I was looking for given that I showed a bunch of examples in the training data set. Um, I also noticed that, I mean, naturally, I saved a bunch of tokens because I didn't have to put any examples. So it was literally just a one shot, uh, zero, sorry, zero shot um, learning on the part of GPT-3. Uh, all of these advantages right here basically just naturally come with fine tuning. Um, they were higher quality. Uh, yes, I could fit way more examples than I wanted to in my data set. Saved a bunch of tokens, 100%. And yeah, it was extremely quick. Something interesting though is Regardless of fine tuning though, one way or another, the output became um, degenerative, meaning very repetitive and started to lose its quality in terms of, or not lose its quality, just mimic the quality of that in the data set. And I would try over and over to add more to the data set, but I would always keep coming back to that problem very, very quickly. Um, after only a few generations, I would notice that the, the creativity would plateau and that plateau level would always resemble that of the creativity of the data set. Naturally, right, it's, it's feeding off of this data, it's gonna resemble that data. Um, so I was looking up a lot of info online because I was like, there's no way this is the, the peak of its potential. There's gotta be more to it. And I didn't find that much. Um, I realized I had made a rookie mistake though. Once I pulled up this podcast, I was at the gym and decided that maybe, maybe there I'll find some, some knowledge, some, some answers in on Spotify. So I pulled up this podcast with uh, Peter Wellinger, Wellinger here, um, who's a VP of product and partnerships at OpenAI. And he mentioned something very interesting about using hyperparameters to almost fine tune your fine tune fine-tuned model to get it even more tuned to your specific use case which made a lot of sense because how I was doing it personally was I was doing the installation preparing my data set right here doing using the CLI preparation tool to get my data set formatted and then creating a fine-tuned model um, the de most deepest I went was I wanted to follow my fine-tuned model so I ran this command um, and used the fine-tuned model but beyond that, there wasn't really, I didn't really go that much deeper. Um, and so I realized I had made a very rookie mistake because I didn't look further into the documentation. Inside of the preparing your data set page, you'll find that there's information for best practices um, for different use cases. And very interestingly is the specific guidelines section. Um, and it outlines certain different types of use cases. So there's classification here where you're trying to um, say like, sentiment analysis or uh, putting different tweets into whether they're positive or negative or that sentiment analysis. But they give a bunch of examples um, on different use cases here, like uh, untrue statements. Is the model making a true or untrue statement? Um, so these kind of classification tasks, not only do they provide examples, but they also provide um, best practices on how to fine tune your model um, and which um, hyperparameters to use or how many examples to use here they, they specify those so I found those really interesting um, that they have that detail for those specific use cases and then furthermore after these examples um, is this one conditional generation which is what I'm using is I'm trying to generate some sort of free text some um, some creative content just based off of a prompt um, and that that's a little bit harder in my opinion than um, the classification because the output is subjective, right? So I'm trying to, my data is based on what I think is cool. So it's, it's hard to, to, to find the data set based on that. So I'm trying to create my own um, to feed it. So it's, it was a difficult task, but in this case, the, I found these tips very, very helpful, um, needing at least 500 examples. And then I found these interesting details right here is one to two epochs or um, having a lower learning rate um, and I was like what are these right are these a fine are these a parameters that Peter Wellender was talking about in the podcast uh, sure enough they are and they have details in the advanced usage section um, on 
what those hyperparameters are. You can scroll down, and here they are. You have things like this uh, number of epochs and batch size and learning rate multiplier. So naturally for my use case, I mean, you can pause the video or go look up this link yourself, but I lowered the epochs in my case, which defaults to four, but I lowered it to one. And then I also lowered it to two and ran two different fine tuned models, messed around with the learning rate multiplier to get a lower learning rate. Um, and yeah, the result was significantly, significantly better. Um, so yeah, this is, I mean, it's out here. It's, it's super available to anyone. So this may be redundant for a lot of people, probably is. I'm just uh, <laughs> a very big rookie. Um, but I was just surprised that I hadn't really seen the, these details anywhere outside of the documentation and podcasts. So I thought maybe there's people out there who've had the same mistake as me um, and just wanted to highlight those details. Uh, yeah, check the documentation. There's, there's a lot of good info out there.